Welcome to the Fast Fix channel everyone. My name is Jason and today we are changing the front axles on a 2008 Honda Civic. This should apply to all 8th generation Civics and probably some other generations as well with modifications to the steps that I do. But before we get started, let's take a look at some symptoms that might indicate that you need to change your axles starting from inside the car. Let's put the car in reverse and see if we can hear a clunking sound. Absolutely, let's do it one more time. That clunking sound, those are the joints inside the axle that are loose and kind of clanking around in there. That's one sign that you may have bad axles. All right, we've got the car off the ground a little bit and let's just see if we can turn the wheel and listen. That clunking sound, that's the same sound we heard uh, when we were inside the car shifting into reverse. That is just those joints, again, very loose on that axle. We're going to start on the passenger side. First thing you need to do is loosen your lug nuts, 19 millimeters. Once you got those lug nuts loose, just take them off the rest of the way. Next thing we need to do is remove this indent from the axle nut. So if you've got a punch, take a punch and try to work it up so you can get a flat blade uh, screwdriver in it. Or sometimes the punch will just get it up and you'll be okay. And you can easily break screwdrivers by doing this, just FYI. So you might want to use a screwdriver that you don't like much or that is expendable. And this is what you want it to look like. Just beat it out of there so the axle nut can spin off. Should be similar to this. Next thing we need to do is remove the center cap so we can get to the axle nut. So just take, um, you know, an extension or a deadbolt hammer or something, just pop this off. Comes off easily. And we'll just put our tire back on. Now we can take off our axle nut. This is a 32 millimeter. You will need a large breaker bar for this. These are torqued on to about 134 foot pounds. So I'm using about a three foot breaker bar here really got to lean into it because these are on there good. Just broke free. We're underneath the control arm. We need to remove the steering knuckle from the control arm. So we need to loosen up um, where this ball joint attaches. So we need to remove these two nuts. Uh, on mine, they're 18 millimeter and this bolt right here, which is a 17 millimeter. This is uh, aftermarket. So your, your sizes may be different. Still under the car here, once you get your nut loose and your bolt off, you can kind of just slip a pry bar underneath. Just loosen this up. Make sure it detaches. You'll be okay. Yep. Using a dead ball hammer, we'll just hit the uh, axle nut here and drive the axle back. Loosen up there. Spin it out a little long farther. Should be good. Now what we're gonna do, honestly, just push the axle in best you can, come from behind, just pull it out. Sometimes the control arm can get stuck back in the uh, ball joint bolt, so you gotta watch out for that because it'll hook in and you won't be able to pull it out. But just keep working at it. Pop out, just let it dangle like that. I'm up underneath the oil pan right now essentially and just following the axle to the transmission. And this is the tricky part. We basically need to wedge a pry bar in between that kind of rusty uh, axle connection there with the transmission. So we just need to pry a pry bar in there and just kind of work it out this direction. This will probably be hard for me to capture on film but I'll do the best I can. Get our pry bar back up in there. And there we go. That came out pretty easy. I'm pretty happy with that. We'll just pull it the rest of the way out. Be all set. Here's our new axle from 1A Auto. I will link these in the description. Uh, but it does come with an axle nut, so you don't have to worry about um, ordering that separately, which is nice. Now I just need to fish the new axle through and connect it to the transmission. If 
you can see we don't have a flush fit here so what I'm going to do is just take a dead blow hammer on the other end and just knock it into place and there we go the next thing we need to do which can be a little tricky is work the axle back into our steering knuckle here so we're going to remove the nut and just try to manipulate this as best we can to get this to fit in remember this has gears on it so they need to mesh so we'll probably have to fiddle with it for a little bit in order to get it to fit You'll know when you get it seated, you'll be able to see the axle if it's sitting farther back in the assembly here um, and hasn't messed up, meshed up yet. Just make sure it's popping out kind of like mine is. We're back up under the car again. We need to reattach our ball joint to the control arm. So we just need to finesse this in here. As you saw, I was just hitting the top of the ball joint here with the handle of the dead blow hammer, which got it on. Now we just need to reconnect our nuts and our bolt. We'll tighten the nuts and the bolt to 43 foot pounds. At this point, we can spin our axle nut back on. Before we torque our axle nut, we're gonna make sure that our axle the indent is at the top, that way we can uh, pound this uh, edge down on the axle nut and make sure it fits in here snugly. We're ready for final torque. Let's go to 134 foot-pounds. All right, should be set. Now, as stated before, we need to bend this lip down into this gap right here, so I'm just going to take a punch and a hammer. All set. And that's it everyone, the axles are swapped out. If I had to rate this on a difficulty scale, with five being the hardest, for someone who's never done anything mechanical in their past, I'd probably set this around a four. If you have done things mechanical in your past, maybe around a two, two and a half. It really depends how tricky those axles are when dislocating from the transmission. As you saw, the passenger side really popped out quite easily, while the driver side, that took about 10 minutes for me to get out. But hey, this overall was not a bad job, and I think it is something you can do yourself, given the right tools. So if this video helped you, please help me and hit like and subscribe. It does make the channel successful. Thanks for watching, and have a great rest of the day.